All right, topic five, meshing. Um, I'm gonna call this the Associate's Degree Program in SolidWorks Plastics Meshing. It's a long section with a lot of, long section with a lot of tips. Uh, so, a couple of things here. Uh, generating a good mesh is vital to analysis, um, well, analysis success with SolidWorks Plastics. Quality of your CAD model, the features used to build the geometry can either lead to a very easy to create mesh or a very hard to create mesh. In this section, I'm gonna show you some quick fixes to meshing that are going to improve the quality of the mesh. Uh, we'll also take a look at things like topology and meshing tools and a lot of stuff that's really cool to see in SolidWorks Plastics. All right, so uh, already alluded to this earlier, I probably don't want to include all of that details from that um, etched in text. What I'm gonna do is a couple of different tools where you can get an understanding of what your part geometry is ahead of time. So one of those is the check command. All right, so if I just click on check here, it says I'm pretty good, but let's say I wanna see short edges. And do I have any really short edges in the model that are you know, 0 0.1 millimeters or shorter? And I'll just click on a couple of these. Yeah, I've got lots of them, and most of them are around the text. All right, so that's one. Uh, you would want to use that tool for verifying some of the features uh, of the geometry. Uh, probably my favorite here is using the geometry analysis command. It, it's like a check on steroids. Um, so this is going to take a little bit to, to dig through, but it's basically going to scan through the entire part. We're going to look for edges and faces and slivers and knife edges and so forth. This is really what we need to keep in mind for um, how the quality of the mesh is going to be generated if we don't make any changes to the part geometry itself. So we're almost through with scanning everything here. Discontinuous edges, and we've got just a little bit more to go, and then we'll get into visualizing where the results are. All right, so 395 sliver faces. I have one knife edge, we'll just click on that. The nice thing about using this tool is it will point to us where we need to look for that specific geometry. All right, now this would be very easy to miss uh, when you're generating this CAD model. You know, that knife edge, yes, it's in the part as modeled, but that is going to lead to some issues with meshing later on. We also have these things called discontinuous edges. I'll highlight a few of them. Again, these are all in that text in the model. All right, so you've got those commands there uh, for checking the geometry ahead of time, which help you out. Uh, now, it, when it comes to generating a mesh, again, I already have this study set up. Uh, we'll take a look at a couple of things here. All right, so the first is when I go in to create the mesh, all right, I'll just use my curvature-based algorithm and I'll click Create. All right, so a lot of the time here is the surface meshing algorithm trying to resolve what needs to happen around that text. All right, so as you can see, it's going to take more than just a few seconds to get through this. And uh, all right, so here's the first key that uh, we might have a few issues here. I'm just gonna zoom in and you can take a look at what's happened to some of these letters. They're obviously very truncated, don't look like the actual letter itself, um, but how bad is it? All right, so this is a, a button we often miss. It's the edit slash review button. Uh, and it shows we have, well, the good thing is we do have a waterproof model. We do have one mesh group, but we have element intersections, non-manifold elements, uh, and then bad and very bad elements. Um, little preview here, I'll click on the check mark. Uh, I actually have a tool in SolidWorks Plastics called Leader Lines. All right, that should have turned on my Leader Lines. Go to quality, and then it'll show up. Uh, so this is pointing to all of the bad or very bad elements in the model. All right, so you would be tempted to fix these here. We're not actually going to do that. Uh, I'm going to back up and say, well, what happens if I just go brute force and I switch to the very fine mesh? I don't click create. And like before, it's still going to take a while to generate the surface mesh around all of those letters. So if you're on, on the call, I'm interested, type into the chat, how many of you guys fight with meshing in SolidWorks Plastics? That'd be an interesting thing to know. 
I think we all have, right? And we're gonna, <laughs> or you, yeah, it went from almost 30,000 to 60,000 elements there. Yikes. Ah, yes. Yeah. So uh, let's, let's go into edit review and we'll just go into mesh quality. Uh, yeah, you know, so we did bump up what? 30, I don't know, 100%, 120% more elements. Uh, we did reduce the percentage of bad and very bad elements, and I could click fix here. Um, you know, if I go into my summary, uh, we did get rid of the element intersections, non manifold elements, but this is still a really large mesh for doing a plastics project. So um, we don't want to do that. So let's focus on what if I get rid of all that text? All right, so I'll switch to this configuration here. Uh, this is my version without the text, and we're just going to focus on some additional tools that we can work with. All right, so here, um, let's say I just create this mesh with the default element size using the curvature based mesh. All right, so at this point, let's focus on a couple of things here with the edit review button. Uh, we do have some element intersections, uh, we have some bad and very bad elements. That's okay for now. So we'll go into mesh quality and click edit. Like I showed you before, we'll turn on the leader lines. And this is one of those quick fixes. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, manipulation in the graphics window. These elements are highlighted in different colors and you can tell plastics or ask plastics to try and fix those just by clicking the fix button. But you'll notice what happened here is uh, plastics doesn't quite know what should happen in this region. And to plastics, that is an acceptable representation of your geometry. One other little tool here, any element that could not be corrected is still gonna be highlighted. Now this one is reasonably easy to find. Uh, so I'm gonna show you another tool. Um, what's gonna happen is if you have a lot of these purple leader lines into the part, you might not always be able to easily visualize where that is. All right, so I'm gonna click on the check mark and we're going to use the hide element tool. All right, so I'm gonna turn it on and go into edit. Now I have two different modes here. There is select visible and select through. All right, so if I do select visible, I'll just drag my cursor across the screen and then hit hide. All right, so now I still have the elements that are on the back side of the model and I would have to do that again. Or if I do select through, I don't want to make sure I don't drag across that. But if I do select through, let's say I just drag over here and then hide, it's going to hide everything. All right, so you can use these tools to try and get rid of things visually to make it easier for you to find where those poor elements are uh, in your model. Let me back out. Uh, and then at this point, once you've identified it, uh, that would give you an indication of what other tools you might want to use uh, to try and correct this model. So I'll just click reset and that resets the visualization of the mesh like so. And then I can continue on with my meshing work. All right, I'm actually going to make a different change here. I'm going to go to one level uh, of further refinement with the curvature based meshing algorithm. And of course, edit slash review. I have some element intersections. Uh, so element intersections is mesh topology. So I would click on edit. And as I showed you before, turn on leader lines. And it's going to point to where those element intersections are. All right, so this is something that you would want to correct. Uh, and in this case, that intersection has, has to do with how the model is created. I actually have a gap here that I kind of missed when I was modeling it. but I found it when I was highlighting the element intersections. Right, so that's just a couple of different tools that you can use for looking at your mesh. There's the quick tool. When you're looking at mesh quality, you can click on the fix button. Uh, you can use the hide elements feature for uh, reducing the visuals, what you see in the graphics window to help you focus in on where you do have poor elements or bad elements or mesh intersections to try and really visualize what's going on there. Uh, and then, of course, in mesh topology, if you were using that, you could use this automated tool and just try and delete them. Uh, but what's going to happen there is you're going to put a hole in the part, and then you would have to use some additional tools like the fill hole, auto fill holes, and so forth to try and correct this part. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to this version. 
Uh, this has the complete mesh set up from start to finish. It's already been solved. Um, and we're gonna just take a look at a couple of results because this is going to lead into the next session that I'm gonna work on. All right, so a couple of different things about this uh, particular model here. Uh, the first is I'm using a generic ABS resin Turloran GP35. Uh, the injection location is a face over here on the lower right-hand side of the part. Uh, this is also set up with clamping force defined and some venting analysis. So all of these air vents are in the model. Um, they're just vertices where you're gonna have um, basically like a vent along the parting line or maybe a, you're shaving down a, a ejector pin to try and vent around the model itself. So we're gonna just focus on a couple of different results here from this particular study. Uh, so fill time visualization uh, for this part, if I animate that, by the way, this is done with a solid mesh, so I could switch to ISO surface mode. We also have output uh, like pressure at end of fill around 39 megapascal, you also have estimates in plastics for cooling time. This is an estimate of how long it takes to get um, 90, I think it's 90 plus percent of the plastic to below the glass transition temperature. Uh, when you're dealing with venting analysis, you also have things like venting pressure, venting temperature, uh, and then of course some other outputs that we would wanna focus on with plastics would be where are the weld lines in the model or where are the air traps? Right, so all of this was done uh, just by really focusing on the mesh and making sure I was able to generate a good surface mesh that eventually would lead into a really good volume mesh for this analysis work. All right, so that gets us through the end of meshing and just some of the, the tips you can use for improving your mesh. Uh, so really it's about understanding model geometry ahead of your analysis work and we showed two different check geometry tools. And then in plastics, I showed leader lines and quick fixes for bad elements and very bad elements. And, and I didn't show mesh refinement, but we'll, we'll get into that when we get into 3D experience here in a little bit. Uh, we took a look at topology, element intersections, and hiding elements. All right, the bottom line is there are a lot of tools in SolidWorks Plastics to help you build a great mesh, more than just what I showed you today. I get to reserve those for my master's class in meshing with SolidWorks Plastics.